This is the Boom Podcast. The podcast that shows you how to build an amazing business so you can build an amazing life. So you can build an amazing life. The Boom Podcast starts Start now. now. Season four of the podcast continues on. Mm, they said it couldn't be done. Woo. Virtual eight keys, eight <laughs> virtual keys, eight keys to working virtually, eight virtual crushing it, said, yes. eight killer keys yes. to crush it as yes. a virtual eight. Yes. I was desperately <laughs> typing and searching for where so that's going to be. We didn't help you. We just, no, no, no. Yeah, let me flounder. Pop about. quiz, Terry. Pop quiz. Yep. How many piano keys are there? 88. 81. I have no idea. 88, yeah. 88. Yes. Oh, nice. 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 Unless that it's a Bosendorfer Imperial it. Grand and then there's six more. Which I was about wow. to say that. I was about to or say eight that. More. Eight more? No, it's six. Six? Amazing. Well, there's two minor, maybe know. two minors. I didn't know any of that stuff. Pop quiz, Megan. Okay, I'm ready. Pop star, <laughs> singer, last name Keys. What's her first name? Alicia. Boom. Oh, Good job. Easy. Good that job. Was easy. Pop quiz, Christian. <laughs> Terry, myself, and a good friend of ours named Dave Cravata. Shout out to Dave Cravata. Shout out, Dave. Love you, Dave. Used to play in an annual show called Blank Strings and Other Things. Uh, uh, pasta. <laughs> it's keys. Oh. It's keys. Dang it. It's Sorry. keys. It's keys. <laughs> it's keys. <laughs> Pasta, <laughs> strings, and other things. I was thinking, what would people? I do want to play in that show. I do want to play in the pasta show. That doesn't okay, sound bad. Oh, man, it's so great. Terry made homemade pasta for us about a year or so ago, and since then I've said I want to make homemade pasta. Yeah, I it's have not, not hard. I've not. It's not hard, it, but I want to. Yeah, time consuming, and it hurts your hand. Well, like you're doing it wrong. Hand. <laughs> My hands are fine. I don't know how you're doing it. My hands feel fine the whole time. Uh, welcome to the big show, everybody. We're glad to have you along for the ride. This is, in case you're scoring at home, this is not season two or season three or season five. Instead, nope. it's season four. Season four, season four, it's the Boom Podcast, season four. That high note Amazing. at the end. I'm wondering, uh, I'm wondering if, uh, so like, who could hit that high? Could you, Megan, hit that high note? I don't think, not like that, that's well, for sure. None of us could do it like that. I don't think so. I, I play in the alto, the alto field oh, okay. all day. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's gotcha. Holy. Todd, you've got that note in you. I know you Easily. do. I yeah. would be trying it in the shower yeah, today, could. though. That'll be, it'll be the thing I do next time I sing to in the try shower, it? for sure, when yeah. nobody can hear me. A lot of people listen to our podcast in the shower, which is hard because of all the noise. <laughs> is, but yeah. um, can do it. But people go for yeah, it. If you're dedicated for enough, you. you can do it. Good for you. How so, great would it be if during our last episode, when you revealed that you got shot in the eye with shampoo yes. while you were showering, somebody... At that very moment, laughed so hard that they shot themselves in the eye with shampoo. Oh, it could happen. I wish pain upon our listeners no, because I, it's I funny. That if that. that happened to you, info at info. boomrealestate.com. Yes. <laughs> don't Let joke about know. shampoo in the eye. Yeah. Uh-huh. As a survivor, no I don't think it's funny. <laughs> shampoo in the eye. I don't survivor. think it's funny. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to season four. Yeah. Okay, so we had talked last time about operating virtually, and uh, we talked about the advantages, both for yep. an agent or for a brokerage or team, right? But we're not we're not coming at season four with rose colored glasses on to yes. say there are no challenges. Right. It's only upside. We want to attack these challenges head on uh, and help you understand, especially if you're someone who hasn't worked virtually. What are some of the hurdles? What are some of the pitfalls? What are some of the problems? We want to hit those with you today and talk about how we can overcome those so that you can function at a very high level virtually. Yes, I'm very excited about it, and I think we decided. We probably should have talked about this before we hit the big yes. red button to record. Um, I think we like Todd's segment, right? Are we gonna yeah, run yeah, that back? Yeah, I, I think, think we're running that back. I think we're gonna give should him give another, another shot. Give yeah, we're shot. gonna give him another try. This is like the gong show. You're like, coming on probation. I, I can keep going yes. until you all gong me out. Exactly. <laughs> right. Oh, that's funny. Exactly. Oh, that's good times. Okay, so, so um, but let's yes. let's go ahead and dive in uh, to some of the challenges and uh, that that are existing when you operate virtually. Let's yep. do it, right? Let's do it. Yes, we are going to just go through, again, just like Terry said, no rose-colored glasses. There are always hurdles, no mm-hmm. matter what. If you if you aren't virtual, there's hurdles that you have. So we're just going to go over. We've got a short little list of yeah. the challenges you're going to face, but we're also going to tell you how to get through them. So yeah. that's the good part. And it, we're doing this like 
tell you how that applies to an agent and then also how it applies to a team or exactly. brokerage, right? Yeah, this one's going to kind one. of be for each one. They'll apply to both, but some of them will be on one side more than the other, and yep. we'll kind of dive into that. And again, I just want to kind of reference the fact that this is a uh, this this comes from a our learning experiences. Yeah, yes. you know, Good several point. years ago we went virtual and we decided that we wanted to figure it out. And over that time, we discovered all these challenges that we're about to share with you, and we feel at this point that we have overcome most of them, if not all of them. And so we're happy to share kind of those ideas with you throughout the entirety of season four. Nice. I think the fact that we will hit on agents because we're all most of us are agents first Mm -hmm. and then we might have a team and then we might own a brokerage or be a manager at a brokerage. So there's this will apply to everybody. But I think the cool thing is a lot of these challenges become part of the advantages as well when you get oh, through so you just wait till we get oh, there and that's you, can, exciting. you can see what you think we're gonna turn those frowns upside mm. down <laughs> that's exciting exactly that's good news all right so todd you're gonna kick us off buddy i'm gonna kick you off with number one which is simply supplies this is the the craziest thing as we've as we are growing as a brokerage and we bring new agents in and they're from other traditional offices yes uh in office type offices they're one of the first things like what do i do about like printing uh-huh you know yeah, and i'm like you can buy a printer and it, it, Problem like, it, solved. it kills and me now. that like, they like yeah it's, it's but not. some of it is just um, i don't want to say it's not short sighted that's not the right term for it but it they're just not seeing it and and anything not anything but most things with some money you can go get your own you can overcome and your, if you problem. are getting paid more to be in yes. that brokerage or to be able to live that lifestyle yeah. you know then sometimes it's worth it so something like so basically supplies so from an agent standpoint it might be something like well what do i do about my computer which i always just kind of this is the weird thing i always just kind of thought everybody just had their own laptop and mm-hmm. then you realize no there's a lot of people that don't like yeah. they go right. to the office because they want to use the office computer right but you can get great computers now and they're relatively inexpensive all right and again it's one of the most important pieces of equipment you can and have yeah. so mm-hmm. he's probably invested worth in. the investment yes so computers printers binding machines if you're binding your uh things postage yeah. meters laminators laminators you, one of the Kristen. best presents yes. that i ever gave to megan you guys laminating a lot in your real estate businesses no <laughs> not at all <laughs> but she loved the laminator can't think of a single thing that <laughs> for my actual business so the laminator might be more of a personal use <laughs> kind of thing maybe think of the signs you could laminate for your clients just think when we were uh, when I was teaching, they used to have a laminator that was about as big as mm. this table. Yeah, like yes. you just They're the huge. whole sheets and stuff. It was pretty cool. And then you cut things you out. Know, of can it. I yeah. tell you a little yeah. secret? Another mom and I, my kids, one of our kids' elementary schools, we have a we actually have a standing, uh, not an argument. It's kind of like the Sharks oh. versus the Jets, though. Yeah. On when we volunteer, Rivalry. who gets to do the laminating Ooh. and who doesn't? Because we go on different days, uh, and so if uh-huh. I get the laminate, we both love that giant laminator, yeah. and if I get it. I'll, and I'll tell, I've like told the teacher, oh, I love Laminator Day, you know, <laughs> and I'm totally buttering her up. Then I get the Laminator job and I take pictures and I send the other Ooh, mom and I'm taunt like, her. eat oh, yeah. it. Look yes. at me in the Laminator <laughs> yes. with besties. Do you have the big thing that cuts? You put it in there and you pull the thing down? Oh, yeah. Oh, the oh. Widowmaker. We the Widowmaker. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that we with, call those the Widowmaker. <laughs> that with the Laminator. <laughs> <laughs> just, yes. yes. Oh, I have always glorious. thought like if I'm, because we don't have, you guys can break into our house whenever you want. We don't have a lot of self-defense. Mm-hmm. But that's where I'm going. I was like, I'm going to rip yeah. that thing off, and that's going to be my oh. little machete. I'm always scared our kids are going to get a hold of that thing. It really is yeah. petrifying. Oh, yeah, they're big and scary, mm-hmm. for sure. Uh, um, so, <laughs> when they make that noise. Oh, so boy. the office supply Sorry. thing. Well, I have a tech back. tip. I got a tech tip. Oh, you, oh, do. you do? Yeah, wait, hold on. It's, it's time, time for it. <laughs> yes, oh, it's been so too long. It's, it's a tech, tech tip. tip. There it is. <laughs> Timing not great, but hey, you remembered the live That's read. I did remember the live. You'll get the cadence yeah. back. It's all good. No, you mentioned uh, office supplies. Yeah. We got a laser, a color laser printer. Okay. It also um, scans. Yeah. And it also faxes if you have a fax line. <laughs> I don't know why you'd want to fax, but it does it. And I think it's a couple hundred bucks. It's yeah. a Canon. Yes. Yeah. And the toner is not that expensive. Yeah. And it doesn't run and all that kind of – and these are Amazing. not expensive devices. I they're had that not. in as a, as a kind of a quasi little tech tip. Yeah. But these are not difficult hurdles yeah. to get over. Time we, uh, mentioned. Go ahead. Can I close the segment? I, I was just going to say – go ahead. Okay. <laughs> it's time for <laughs> – <laughs> Gotta close it's it up, a tech tip. 
<laughs> you gotta close the segment. If you don't close the segment, the segment runs <laughs> infinitely like, through the rest of the episode. <laughs> the listener's still run. wondering. The listener's like, is it still tent? <laughs> it could run the entire series. We don't actually. want to confuse the whole season. Is it a season long te- mm-hmm. tech tip? Yeah. I can't mm-hmm. believe it. Well, we closed it, so we're good to now go. Now we're good. Back that to you, loop Todd. is closed. Back there to you, Todd. I was just going to say one of the things we did is we invested in a printer yeah. that is online, uh, and basically it it can read when it's low on ink. Yes. And then when it's low on ink, we already have a backup yes. supply, but it orders another supply. Oh, that's nice. Wait, wait, wait. So it's that online. It's, well, like, it, uh, what, uh, it's I don't know how synced. it knows. Uh, yeah. Oh, no, no. <laughs> that's why you did that. Uh, but the, it's stuff so like it's that. So it's like it within your network. Yes. Yeah, it's okay, on our I network. Not and somewhere then, out there. But it's like, so it's HP. So HP knows, like, okay, oh, the Ferris printer is starting to get low. We're oh, going to send okay. them. So, so we're oh, on, so it sends you. Yeah. It automatically just sends us it ink sends when it's It sends us new low. ink when it's it knows crazy. it's low. It's yeah. awesome. That's pretty nice. I have a little tech tip around this, too, Christian. You can open it back up. It's time for It's a tech tip. <laughs> I didn't know if you had to read that part. Oh, since was, it was I your supposed to do that? Oh, yeah, you were I'll do it with you when we close it back <laughs> yeah, up. we got to close hey, the segment. With guys, you. remind us to close it back up. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. We realized, I think, when we were going through this process, that the quality printing is a lot more about the paper yeah, than it is, is the good toner point. of the printer. Yeah. So yep. invest in some of the good color paper. So Dunder mm. Mifflin makes a nice one. Yes. Dunder yes. Mifflin, high quality color paper. That's right. All right, let's close up the tech tip. Let's close it up. It's time for a tip. It's a tech tip. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> You've been right in the same range. I like that. Uh, so Nailed good. it. Back to you, Todd. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so let's keep going with it. So This is going to um, be a four-hour episode so if those, we're not careful here. Those are all office supplies, which, again, you can just buy those things, and you, in which we have in all of our offices, and it's easy. And really, probably about 500 bucks is all outside the computer, yep. and our office is set up to go just like it was in any other office. Uh, but then there's some more real estate-specific supplies to an agent. These would be things like marketing materials, signs, lock boxes, et cetera. Again, those can be housed at your traditional office, but guess what? You can just keep them at your own house. So you buy extra signs, you get your lock boxes, get it all right there at your office. So agents, it's easily supplemented, but we'll get into that in a later point. Another challenge on that same thing for supplies for brokerages is simply how do you get all these supplies to these agents? So if you're a brokerage pushing these things, are you going to say it's on the agent to do these things, or is it something that you're going to ship to them, and how do you do it cost effectively? So you got to keep that in mind. And then lastly, uh, if you are going to house things, so let's say you are keeping signs for your agents, how do you keep them? If Do you have a physical yeah. location for it? Do you want them knocking on your door Saturday morning, mm-hmm. uh, your home door, saying, hey, I need some more signs? Yeah. So you got to think through some of those. Those are challenges. And again, we'll cover all that throughout the season. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah and we're going to answer all these things. It, your questions will be answered. It occurs yes. to me that we're, we're 13 minutes into the show <laughs> and we've said one challenge is... Well, you're going to need some paper. (laughs) (laughs) We've got the solution. Buy it. (laughs) All right. (laughs) We spent 13 minutes on that. I mean, we don't want to give away all the solutions. (laughs) But buy it. <laughs> it's a printer. Uh, I didn't mean to undermine this episode with that oh, little. It just occurred to me. That's no, fun. It's great. Okay, so supplies is a challenge. Yep. But we helped you overcome it. <laughs> Good thing. All, All right, right, Megan. Let's what's move next? On. That's the biggest one, guys. So that's pretty worry. much We're the hardest part. From, or down it. near hill from yep, there. Down. Okay. Yep. yep. <laughs> All right, so let's move on. Next one's going to be training, education, meetings, Mm -hmm. all of those things that you might do at an office. How do you facilitate them when you're virtual? So for the agent, you just have to be really aware of making sure you're getting the education you need and where do you get it. So staying focused on being able to get that education, to stay in the loop. How are you staying in touch um, just with like ongoing education on what's changing in the market? How are you staying in touch with other agents that maybe are having great ideas? is all solvable, Mm -hmm. actually fairly easily, but you do need to stay ahead of that as an agent. And then as a brokerage, this is a a bigger, um, should be a bigger focus for you on how to supply the agents with the ability to get that education. New agents, um, experienced agents, agents that have a team, agents that are ready to grow a team. How are you providing that to these agents so that you are the resource? And then trying to motivate agents the next 
hurdle right. you will mm-hmm. find is that then once you have it in place, you have to keep the agents motivated to plug into it because yep. it's easy for them to kind of be on an island or float away from you. So you have yeah. to try extra hard to make sure they're motivated to be at those trainings and to stay in contact, you know, plugging into the meetings, all of that right. stuff. It is funny how you get these agents that'll be like, well, what am I going to do? Like they're so used to their weekly meetings on mm-hmm. Tuesday mornings yep. in the office. So how am I going to learn about real estate? You know? Yeah. So many options. Yeah. Yes. I think it, that's an interesting thing. And, and I know we're going to talk about coming up communication and culture and things like that. Um, but it, I think a lot of people assume if you are a virtual agent, that means you're pretty much off on your own little island yeah. and that's you're just yep. doing your own thing. And we would we would challenge that and say, if you feel that way, you probably need to get with a different team or brokerage or something that feels a little bit more connected. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because if they're doing it right, and which brokers and team leaders that are listening out there, if you're doing it right, your agent shouldn't feel a disconnect. They mm-hmm. should feel like they're not only getting everything they felt they were getting in the traditional office, mm-hmm. but they're getting more too, yes. more opportunities. Yes. So right. So that's Agree. good. Good stuff. Let's Let's, let's interrupt because guess what time it is. Oh, oh is it time? time is it's it? time for Todd's fun segment of what, what did we call that, producer Christian? What's uh, that called again? <coughs> aren't you glad? Aren't you you're glad not you're not a? Not a aren't, <laughs> aren't you glad you're not a podcast producer? Uh, that's right. <laughs> oh, that's a challenging job too. Okay, well let's fire the sounder. Let's do it. Okay. Let's open it up. Get on the train for Todd's new segment. Oh, I guess hey, Ferris says, remind me to close that when we're yes. done with this yeah. segment. Okay, good idea. You don't want that, yeah. that, don't want that to run off. Don't yeah. let it run All off. Day. All, right. All right, we're continuing just calling out occupations. I've done some research online, finding fun stories that apply to these occupations. We're not saying one occupation is worse than another, right. even though it's obvious. Obvi- uh, obvious. But, but this is, but we are trying to say, hey, realtors that are listening right now, like, you got it pretty it's nice. Not so bad. Pretty not so bad. Nice. Yep. All right, so aren't you glad you're not a. Server. Oh, Ooh, now this one's gonna ring there. true to the heart been to there. Terry and I. Yes. Megan, I don't think you've ever served. Christian, nope. have you ever served? I have not. No. Okay. All right. I'm gonna have to dive deeper into your history, your employment oh, history, yeah. so I can yeah. find oh, something that idea. relates. It's pretty sure. Have, no, yeah. you have done some things. You've got a little eclectic mix of things. I do, but done. I've never done a waiting. Like waiting tables. Yeah, yeah. waiting tables. Well, yeah. clearly because you don't say waiting. What do you say? Serving. <laughs> serving. Okay, sorry. <laughs> So again, I, I tra- did notice that, like, if we go in a restaurant, if yeah. it's close to closing time, you guys are adamantly that we're not going to go in there. We, oh yeah, there's you know, definitely like, like you have a, certain rules. Yeah, that you have the rule. Like, Whereas I'm like, no, blow in there. Yeah. We got 15 like, minutes to order. Listen, the kitchen's <laughs> open for another five minutes. We're getting in there. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, we're like, do they have three or four hours left? Because we don't want to inconvenience them. I know. Yeah, I do feel bad now when yeah. you're like, yeah, okay. Um, and so also just kind of a reminder that there's some really horrific stories out there and there's some nice easier ones. We're trying to play it down the middle, but we're all deciding what the middle is. Uh, <laughs> I've made a decision. Well, so this is one that I thought was an interesting story. Okay. Not horif- horrific by any means. Nothing okay. grotesque. Just an interesting story. And then I thought, again, witty banter after. <laughs> right, we're, we're really relying heavily on witty banter. Make a note of that, Terry. Yeah, let me make okay. a quick note. Right. Witty banter. banter. So, uh, so I found this story that a certain... Server relayed about an interesting experience they had, uh, and the server says, an older man came into the restaurant where I worked with a picture of himself, younger and shirtless. Hmm. 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 That's interesting. We're off to a start. Okay. Yeah. He sat the picture in front of him and ordered a hard-boiled egg and hmm. fries tossed in mayo. That's what? weird, too. And then he just sat there with a picture of himself from when he was younger and ate his meal. <laughs> and that's it? <laughs> that's it. <laughs> what? Uh, uh, okay. Yes. That okay. Was, I yes. Just, I'm envisioning it. And I, yes. I don't put it past somebody to do either. Like, but right. It, and I'm trying to think, like, is the guy, like, doing it intentionally to be funny? Or is this just, like... He's reminiscing about Glory his days. Right. <laughs> it's just him and his younger self going out for a hard-boiled egg. Who orders a hard-boiled egg? egg and fries and tossed fries in mayo. Tossed yeah. in mayo. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Hey, fries and mayo and ketchup are good. Yeah. Too. I don't know if I yeah. toss them in. It is though. a Belgian right. thing where yeah. they, they do the mayo with yeah. the fries. But just, but just tossed good. in mayo. Just tossed it's in mayo. Odd. I think the tossed in mayo is the less important thing to focus on <laughs> the less weird thing about well, the story okay. <laughs> the like, he comes in he's got a shirtless picture of himself younger but he tossed his french mayo. fries in mayo yeah. what is that? I was thinking hard boiled egg Odd. let's talk about condiments we should be tossing our french fries in I was trying in. to think any uh, horror stories that you can easily or, or, oh. or fun stories from um. your serving days I thought of the one I'll give you a moment to think Okay. Uh, I thought of one where I had a lady and Terry and I as you guys may know we jest did, we you, did you work at the jest. same place 
place? Uh, we yes. did Outback Steakhouse. Oh, okay. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. So uh, a lot of traffic. Yeah, a lot of people. Of, I've worked at Tarragon Grill, which went out of business. I worked at TGI Fridays and had m- a plenty of flair. Yeah, 13 uh, pieces of flair. I have them. And then mm-hmm. I uh, retired from the server industry after working at Outback Steakhouse. Mm-hmm. So there you did go. Did you get a big retirement? So they threw a huge <laughs> <laughs> like 401k healthcare yep. whole deal. Yep. I cast that watch. bad boy out. <laughs> that's it. And it was enough to cover my cost of dinner at Outback Steakhouse. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> yeah, well, that's cool. Yeah. Um, so I was just thinking, I so we had a, a couple come in. It was actually uh, two two ladies and a guy that came in, and they were they were pretty drunk. Just before your retirement. Uh, yeah, yeah, Pretty retirement. Before. And uh, and so one of the ladies, she came up and she's like, "Where's the restroom?" And one of the jokes I used to say was, "Ha ha, we have a his and hers tree outside." Ha ha ha! Uh-huh. Isn't right. that hilarious, right? Yeah. And so uh, apparently, oh, lady was that. super offended. Yes, and thought that I was basically insinuating that she was not good enough to pee in our bathroom. Oh, oh no! And which I felt really bad after I realized that, but I didn't know that at the time. So instead, she sat at the table, and for the rest of the meal, if I came to the table, first thing I came to the table, I said, "Hey, can I get you a drink?" She goes, you don't talk to me. My man orders for me. Oh, and I was like, oh well, this goodness. is not on a good start. Oh, no. No. Oh, and so man. then at that point, what do you do? So I'm like, uh, does she want <laughs> a drink? <laughs> <laughs> I'm really confused. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you ask the guy? So, I did. I was like, yeah, what um, did I do? Does and, then, she... and then I remember I brought she... hot wings out, and I set them down. And as soon as they hit the table, she goes, put those back. Those aren't done. And I was like, all right. Uh, and at that point, I knew it was over. Like, yes. there's no yeah, writing this wrong. Right. Yes. So, and they left me a, oh, no. a penny. Uh, I forget if it's tails wow. or heads up. They left me a, my tip was one penny. Wow. And then they called oh. our uh, the manager over, and they, they oh, no. got mad at her for a while. And then, so she came over and she's like, listen, they're just really drunk. Yeah. But at the same time, let's oh, not use no. that whole peeing outside thing anymore. Yeah, maybe retire <laughs> that but joke. at the same, same time. time. <laughs> she's like, all right, I got you. By the way, we think it's time for you to retire from Outback Steakhouse. <laughs> it might be time. <laughs> the old, those jokes don't fly anymore, Todd. They worked back in the 50s. But now it's over. Don't do it. Okay, well, I mean, that she was said, fun. But just to be safe, let's not use it. <laughs> that, was, that was fun. That was good. Uh, Christian, let's close this okay, segment up. That was segment. great. Yeah. The Woody Banter. Oh, we're good on the train. Todd's in his segment. All right, let's roll on, Todd. What's the next uh, the next challenge of <laughs> operating segment. virtually? Is it jokes that don't land with your <laughs> yes. clientele? Is that it? It does have to do with communication. Okay, hey, okay. Hey, look how we did that. <laughs> All right, from an agent's perspective, uh, it's going to be hard because what happens, the, for them, it's not too big of a change like whether you're in an office or you're at home you're probably not like walking over to your aid your client's house to talk to them so communication shouldn't change for an agent right. whether they're virtual or in a traditional office uh, but what they might miss is that some of that pure communication like that water uh the water machine cooler what's that <laughs> The water machine. The water machine. <laughs> you know, back in the fifties, Todd, maybe that's what you called it. Was the water machine? Not the drinking fountain. It there. became a, it became a water fountain, and now it's a water cooler. The water Those cooler. are the things. It it's the evolution yeah. of the water machine. <laughs> I really miss my water machine. Uh, but but agents may miss that. They may miss some of those uh, those communications that they have Gather with their the peers. Gather around the old soda stream. Yep, there it is. That's the new age one. Oh man. Um, so we so will have good. a solution for that, by the way. But that also rolls into your team and your brokerages Mm -hmm. is how do you give the agents that ability to make sure that they one can meet with their clients because if you don't have a physical space if you're truly truly virtual you may have to figure out what you're going to do about where to meet Starbucks Uh, second thing (laughs) is staying involved and invested with your agents because you will see this there's going to be a disconnect when you don't see your agents on a regular basis you're going to miss those opportunities to just talk with them at the water machine and have like catch (laughs) up but you need to make sure that you figure out ways to stay invested stay involved and then make them feel the love as well as let them talk to the other agents and have those relationships and there's going to be a solution yeah i'm actually excited about that one we've got some really great options uh to get over this hurdle that i think make it even better than the day-to-day office that people are traditionally used to yeah exciting so we're withholding solutions for the most part right right now right like yeah we gave you the freebie with buy office supplies that's the free solution (laughs) of today that's your nugget that's your takeaway you can see the value in our solutions a lot of value in our solutions Solutions. Printing paper really makes the difference. It? <laughs> it does. It, does. A big it deal. is a hack. That's what we determined. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah. all right. So the next one that we'll need to overcome is just pr- 
production in general and and being aware that you need to keep your production and 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 along with those relationships up so agents teams brokerages they can all be impacted if the agents aren't motivated to produce so if it's you hey whatever you need to get in place we're going to work on that to make sure your production you're motivated you're staying on track and then you're moving forward and your production should be going up and your net profit should also be mm-hmm. going up as well yeah. because of this um, arrangement. But we right. need to talk through how to do all of that. And the same with brokerages. I mean, you have to be aware if you're virtual and you don't see somebody every single day physically, how do you stay in front of them and keep them motivated and keep that production up? It's doable. Stick with us. That's right. That's right. That's a big <laughs> one. That's a big one. And Todd, you've got a big one now too. This is yeah, another kind of tricky wicket. Yep. So uh, all of these things. Uh, <laughs> Sticky wicket. <clears throat> I want the tricky wicket. I don't okay. know. If I like both. Uh, all these things. Even flinch. I think it felt no, good. I think for it yeah. okay. felt real good. Uh, <laughs> water machine. Water. <laughs> water machine guy. Yeah, you can't go wrong with your vocabulary with me. Um, so all these things kind of roll into one, which is just simply culture. And this mm-hmm. is probably the hardest thing that people have to agents and teams and brokerages have to figure out is how do you maintain that positive culture, that inviting culture, that culture that people want to stick around for. How do you do that when there's this disassociation or this? isolation when you're working virtually. So it's going to naturally happen, but there's also ways to get past it. But keep in mind too, there's a lot of agents that they're not in it for the culture. Like yeah. they're they're in it for everything else that yep. your team or your brokerage offers. And so some of those agents you don't have to try to, you know, bridge the gap as much as you do with some of the other ones. So yeah. Yeah. so keep that in mind. Challenge for the agents is to also stay involved when they're working from home, when they're working virtually, how do they stay involved with teams and brokerage? How do they stay inspired to want to be a part of that company or be a part of that team. So that's another challenge that you're going to have. And again, all these solutions coming. Teaser, teaser, teaser. That's right. Teaser, Good stuff. teaser, teaser. Uh, so the last challenge, Megan, this is kind of your wheelhouse, buddy. Yeah. This is one of your wheelhouses. Mm, retention you. time. It's retention, which is awesome because though you could lose agents and teams and brokerages really need to be aware that you can lose agents if you're not paying attention to retention. If they're not getting that love and the training and the support and all those needs that they've come to expect, it's really important, but all, what's cool is this one. All the things we're going to talk about before we get there are going to play into the retention. Yeah, And mm-hmm. then For just sure. focusing on it just directly, we're going to talk through just some key things that you need to be doing to make sure you're not losing agents, mm-hmm. um, that you're doing even better than you were before. I'm really excited about the retention and... I think it's going to amaze people how your retention can even be higher with this model versus the traditional Ooh, model. Yep. I'm going to put money on it. I agree. Wow. I yeah. like it. That's exciting. So I'm going to recap the challenges. Uh, don't be alarmed by this list, but they are a plenty. There's supplies, which... <laughs> we spent the most time on it, obviously. Yeah, the most time there. <laughs> Trainings, communication, laminators, Terry. production, <laughs> culture, and retention. It might seem like an insurmountable list, but it's not. <laughs> we will climb the insurmountable mountain, and it will all be fine. So it's all coming up throughout season four. Christian, hit the hit the music for the outro. We're gonna wrap up the show so all people right. don't think the thing keeps okay. going yeah. and going. Okay. We close every segment. Close we close all the all segments. Right, okay. Now we're closing Got the it. whole show. Two thumbs up. Two thumbs up everybody. We'll see you next time. Find yourself a shirtless pick and have a hard boiled egg <laughs> around the water machine. We'll see you next time on the Boom Real Estate. Toss those fries and mayonnaise. <laughs>